Welcome to the Lina Mike Show. I'm with Pierre Ligi Colina, world's most famous football referee and uh, voted by FIFA as the best referee six years in a row. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Great Thank to you have much. you with us. How, you. Tell us a little bit on how you got into refereeing and how does one become best in the world? I mean, tell us a little bit of how that happens. Um, how I got into refereeing, uh, really by chance. Mm -hmm. um, I started when I was uh, 17 years old. At that time, I was playing football. And uh, my, my desk mate at, uh, at the school uh, decided to, to attend a referee course in the city of Bologna, in the north of Italy, the city where, uh, where I was born and yeah. uh, where I was living at the time. Um, I accepted to, to, to go with him, uh, simply saying, why not? Um, but I said, uh, as I said before, uh, really by chance, because I have no idea, no, mm -hmm. I was not convinced. Uh, it was only an experience. Uh, uh, and when you are 17 years old, uh, certainly uh, making experience, making different experiences uh, is something that you, right, you do. Yeah. And uh, maybe 90% or uh, even 99% of these experiences uh, finish very, very quickly. Sure. Uh, that was one, the one exception out of 100 because, uh, of course, I'm still involved in, uh, in refereeing, uh, even uh, not as an active refereeing, but as a chief, re chief refereeing officer. Of UEFA, so I'm, uh, uh, I would say, the responsible, the coach of the, the referees in European competitions. Mm. Mm. So you, you started off accidentally, and then you yeah, went absolutely. to university. I mean, you went to, to your your degree in uh, university. Yeah, this is of course at that time uh, refereeing was only a uh, sort uh, of hobby, yeah. something done uh, uh, in the spare time from, for fun. But how did uh, that translate into your passion? I mean, how did that translate into so many years of? of well, certainly, certainly, first of all. Football was, was a passion for me, of okay. course, uh, and, uh, and also, uh, years by years, uh, also, also refereeing became uh, something that I, that I liked. Um, again, uh, when I started, uh, uh, of course, I was more focused on, uh, on, uh, on other things, uh, uh, let's say university, for instance, mm -hmm. and then when I started working, um, so to my job. Uh, but of course, uh, when, you, when you continue, uh, when you reach uh, uh, higher and higher levels in, in refereeing, uh, then of course you must uh, focus yourself also Specific. on this activity because uh, it becomes something uh, maybe not professional mm. because uh, uh, at that time uh, uh, referees were not, uh, were not professionals, yeah. uh, uh, but certainly it's something that, d that needs uh, uh, time to be invested to to be to be ready yep, to, yep. to to go through with this activity. So, but how did you then become? How how did you become best in the world? Is that something you aspired to, or you say, yeah, I want to be the best referee in the world? Or you just kind of? I don't of think I don't think that slowly. can uh, I don't think that you can decide to yep. become uh, no. uh, the best in the world in any activity. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, um, you need to have something because uh, if you don't, uh, if I know. Uh, Feeling for music, uh, you passion, cannot uh, yeah. you yeah. cannot become uh, the best piano performer sure. in, uh, in in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so certainly, I maybe I had something. Uh, certainly, I also learned something because when you start so young, uh, as I did, uh, 17, uh, you start uh, learning uh, something uh, about uh, deciding or making decisions uh, that is not. Uh, very normal mm. to do at that age, mm. because when you are 17 years old, particularly at that time, um, you don't decide anything. anything. Yep. You have your parents, you have other people taking sure. decisions on your behalf, uh, and uh, learning uh, since that age uh, to decide how to decide, uh, what to do, how to deal with decisions and so on, it's something uh, uh, certainly very important and, uh, and helpful. And then, of course, uh, you need something to start, uh, but you also need, uh, uh, I would say, a hard work uh, to go through because yeah. even uh, you have the, the, you have something in your DNA. Uh, if there is something that uh, that makes you different from others, mm -hmm. then of course is uh, is uh, is the way you prepare yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, how much you work uh, uh, during uh, during the week that gives you. Uh, the, 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 so the good performance and I would say the, the so success. So is there a lot of preparation that is required to prepare for a game? Definitely. Or like, like, I mean, tell us a little bit about what that is. Um, there are different uh, aspects of the preparations, uh, of the preparation of, uh, of a referee. Uh, certainly, uh, the basic one is uh, knowing the rules, but it's nothing. Yeah. 
yeah. was almost nothing. Uh, of the course, he has to be an athlete among athletes. So keep and, yourself, keep yourself and also fit and everything. He's, he's, not, he's not really keeping yourself fit. You, you really need to train uh, based on programs. Uh, so you, you have to do a specific work. Uh, normally, uh, a referee, referee in top, uh, in top level in, in the world uh, normally trains, uh, I would say, four or five days a week. Uh, wow. Then you have also to uh, keep your uh, body in a good condition. So you need the physio, you need the other sessions, uh, as well as a player. Mm. Uh, considering that, uh, that the the average age of a player is uh, between 25 and 32. Right, right. The average of a referee is between 30 and 40. So um, you yeah. need also, you need even to be more careful in dealing with this. So these are the issues yeah. that, that, that may crop up between players and so on and so forth? Yeah, of course. Okay. So um, again, the referee has to know before what can happen. Okay. Cannot okay. be, uh, he cannot say, I was not expecting. Because when you are surprised, uh, very often you are wrong. Mm. Absolutely. In every field. And, you know, speaking of wrong and decision making, you mentioned a lot of that. You know, making, pr you know, making good decisions under pressure is part and parcel of being a referee. How do you learn that skill? I mean, how do you... How do you, how do you again, again, you can, uh, you can um, learn by experience. Yeah. So the referee starts, I started with youth competition when I was, uh, was young. Then I went through a different level, uh, higher and higher. So you create uh, some, uh, some, uh, some backgrounds, uh, some experience that, uh, of course, are, are needed to, to go through. Then, of course, you, have, you need something uh, Particularly if uh, if you got the top, uh, you have something different from yep. from from other. But certainly, being able to 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 make decisions. Uh, uh, was it very challenging? I mean, to make decisions on the spot in such uh, a pressure. I mean, you got seventy thousand. It's, it's not it's not it's not only a matter of uh, difficult, difficult decision to be taken. It's, it's also, as you correctly said, it's also a matter of the environment yeah. that could be not only the 70,000 or 90,000 yeah. people attending a match at the stadium, but, uh, but the responsibility yes. of the importance uh, of the decision um, or of the match mm. you are uh, referring, or, uh, or even the, let's say, the responsibility towards yourself. Mm. If you are appointed for a Champions League final or for a World Cup final, uh, it means that you did a lot of job, yes. uh, you, you did a very good job to be there. Yes. Uh, one mm -hmm. wrong decision can banish everything. Absolutely. So you are uh, in a World Cup final. You can be you can be remembered as the referee of the of the, the World Cup final if everything goes well. Mm -hmm. If something goes wrong, mm -hmm. you get known for the wrong yeah. reason. But you know, mistakes are part and parcel of being referees. I mean, all, all referees are human and make mistakes from time to time. And I have to say, I have to say that uh, normally we speak about uh, uh, mistakes. In a match, there can be one mistake and one hundred good decisions. Absolutely. So. I have to say, as well as for uh, every decision maker, uh, it's nonsense to speak only about, about the wrong decision taken yes. when you take uh, 100 decisions yes. correctly. Of course, uh, this is something that works it. for everyone. Yeah. Uh, there are decisions that you cannot make wrong. Yeah. And this makes the difference between uh, a decision maker and a successful hmm. decision maker. The capability to make uh, correct those decisions mm. that you need to make correct. Okay, but what, you know, let, let's say when you do have make one or two wrong mis you know, mistakes and it gets highlighted, I mean, uh, case in point was, I guess, the Villarreal game where there was uh, against a British club where there was a, a certain mistake. Uh, how do you overcome that? I mean, how do you prepare yourself to say, okay, I made a mistake, I'll, I'll, I'll go again. And, you know, because many times mistake kind of depress or, you know, the pressure of, uh, of, of society, sort of, you know, kind of all the, the, the different thorns and stuff that comes to you. How do you, you know, even when you make a mistake, how do you step up and say, you know, forget it, let's move on and, and keep going and continue to be the best? Um, how do you pull yourself up? First of all, uh, you need to understand uh, why you committed the mistake. Okay. Uh, so you do that self -analysis. So this is, uh, this, is, uh, this is something crucial mm -hmm. to avoid to repeat the mistake in the yep. future. Yep. And then uh, what is uh, really important uh, is uh, to come back uh, stronger than before okay. because uh, you cannot continue to think about the mistake you committed. Yep. This, is, uh, this is important, particularly if you have to take uh, other, other decisions in, in the future. So once you have, you have understood why the mistake was committed, why you, uh, you have done uh, that, that, something better, thing, yeah. then of course is a new story. 
No, you've also you also run your business. I mean, you, you do a, a your financial advisor for for your business at this point. What you know, and as you look at business as a whole, I mean, what what do you think? Uh, and football is very close. What do you think defines a successful bis- uh, a team, a football team, and likewise a successful business? Are there similarities? That In the see? way hmm? a team or an athlete can uh, can get success, and, uh, and there are uh, many things that are. Uh, done in football or in other sports, uh, in team sports, uh, that can be uh, easily applied in the, in the business. Uh, of course, easy to say the teamwork. Mm. Um, in, uh, in, every, in every team sport, uh, uh, it's true that the talent make uh, uh, a team uh, winning one match. Yeah. Very difficult that uh, you can win a league yeah. only because you have one single great uh, uh, player. Yeah, yeah. The same. The same in business. Yeah. Uh, you need. Uh, you need the, 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 the support of the Double of the, the team. team. Um, the way to deal with the wrong moments, mm. because uh, uh, it's, like, like you said, uh, you it's almost. Uh, it's mom- it is uh, almost impossible to to be always successful. Mm. You can fail. Absolutely. Sometimes you can yep. fail. Yep. And uh, dealing with uh, your teammates uh, when someone failed uh, is also something very important. Because you cannot kill him. Absolutely, absolutely. You need to ca- you need uh, to take him back uh, at the very at the very top. Yeah. Did you have a role model growing up that you looked up to as a leader who you you kind of inspired you to to where you are today? I don't think I don't think that you have to copy something from someone. Mm. I think it's very important to take the best from uh, wherever uh, you can find from it. from everywhere uh, or from everybody. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I. In my, my career, let's say, as a referee, I became uh, um, referee in Serie A, the top division in Italy. I was 31 years old and I stopped in when I was 45. So in 14 years, uh, I've been the youngest and I've been the oldest. Mm. Yeah, I've been yeah. the oldest. Yeah. Um, so I, it was, uh, maybe it was uh, easy to learn something from the older. Mm. I have to say that I learned a lot also from the youngest mm. at the end of my career because uh, uh, a new generation brings something that is new, Absolutely. that is different, uh, and you cannot uh, look at them uh, only as uh, the young, uh, the newcomers, uh, those uh, who have to learn. You can learn uh, even from them, and this is what I did. Yeah, and, I, and, and that's a hallmark of a leader, right? Constantly learning, yeah. constantly growing. And Absolutely. It, you, know, what you, need to, you need to keep yourself very open to, to everything if you want to continue. To be successful. F- final question. I mean, if you have a couple of pieces of advice for our viewers, for them to become best in the world, for them to, to you know, in whatever field that they aspire to, or for them to become great in their lives, you know, and to be great leaders, what kind of advice would you leave them with? I think there is only one word, work. Work. I think uh, working hard, uh, being very committed, uh, being always very focused, uh, knowing everything, uh, always uh, uh, being prepared. These are the words that are key for uh, for being successful. And that exemplifies your life to, 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 much, to some extent, right? Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you very much. We're here, we're here with Prilugi Kalina, world's best referee six times in a row. Thank you so much for thank being you. here. Thank you very much. We're at the Leader thank on Mix you. Show.